If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. This is definitely a PSA warning you not to bother with this one. In this episode, we are looking at the lapis lazuli or lapis lazuli, depending on how you like to pronounce it. The color payoff you get from this one is so sad that I had to make a video about it so that you didn't experience disappointment. I knew about this color's poor reputation before purchasing it, but it is worth buying it if it prevents others from getting disappointed at such an expensive purchase. Daniel Smith's Lapis Lazuli is one of the most expensive color in their range. It is a series five, which is shoulder to shoulder with the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine and the Kingman Green Turquoise Genuine. Only with those two colors, you do get a lot more color for your money. Now, of course, Lapis Lazuli is one of the most expensive pigments out there. So any paints made with the Lapis Lazuli is going to be hugely expensive, eye-wateringly expensive. To get the brightest blue pigment out of the lapis lazuli, it takes so much effort and time. I will link a video of the pigment being made so you can appreciate just how much effort is required to create this pigment. Obviously, the weaker the pigment, the cheaper it is. And I understand that since Daniel Smith creates enormous amounts of each color, it just doesn't work out to use a really high quality lapis lazuli pigment. I also understand that to sell a 15 milliliter tube of good quality lapis lazuli, each tube would cost so much that nobody would buy it. I understand all that, but I just feel a deep sadness when I see the Daniel Smith's paint. It is so super hard to rewet and so faint. It is just sad. I would say that this is the hardest color to rewet and the color with the least amount of color payoff in the whole of Daniel Smith's Primatech range, if not for the entire range. Of course, there will be some people that will really appreciate having this soft version of the Lapis Lazuli, but I just want you to be aware of how faint it is before you invest in this paint. Daniel Smith's website says, Lapis Lazuli have been prized for its beauty, its mystical property, and its perfection as a pigment. Ancient civilization believed that the veins of glittery pyrite found in the lapis lazuli were actual gold driving up its value. The stone's expense today, as in the ancient world, results from its hardness, which makes extraction difficult. Mined in the mountains of South America, this gem quality pigment is a subtle blue-gray with a classic color that is light reflective due to the irregular and angular shape of the pigment particles. Our genuine lapis lazuli is at least 80% pure gem pigment suspended in a natural binder. It is a eye-watering series five color, classified as excellent in lightfastness, transparent, non-staining, and granulating. <sighs> so, this is Lapis Lazuli. Now, let me just let you know that I have not changed my light setting. I haven't bleached out this sheet with powerful lights or changing the exposure compared to the other videos. This is just how faint Lapis Lazuli is. And you can see why I call this quite disappointing for the amount of money you have to pay for this color. Let me just remind you that this is a series five color, which in the UK you pay upwards of 22 pounds per tube, which I'm guessing is about 18 to 20 dollars US. As you know, I paint these from dry paints, but I pretty wetted the color and I scrubbed at the color lows to get some semblance of mass tone. 
and this is the best I could do. I definitely spent more time scrubbing at this color than any of the other colors I've shown you and I'm going to show you in the future in this series and you definitely get the least amount of color out of the entire range. It does thankfully do gradated washes really well. There's practically no way you could get cauliflowering from this color and you do get very strong granulations as you can see here. Another good thing about this color is that it actually does stick to what Daniel Smith says this color will do. It is very transparent, as they say. It is very easy to lift the color off all the way back to white, but that's not surprising considering how pale this color is. And it does actually do glazing pretty well. And since it's a granulating color, you do get the linear pattern through the gauze and this is the only place you're going to see a real concentration of this color that is something close to what you might imagine a lapis lazuli color to look like. Since it's a granulating color it doesn't do very well with salt and I swear I did do the water blooms on here but you don't see that very well. Let's look at the color mixes and these are the 12 colors I mixed the lapis lazuli with. Now, because I want you to see the effect of the main mixing color, I do tone down this mixing color to match the tinting strength of the main color I'm mixing. And in this case, it results in the palest palette we've ever had on this channel, which for some people is gonna be great. I know I keep dissing this color, but I totally am aware that for some people, this faint color is going to be brilliant and just what they're looking for. And in fact, it does create a really nice, very, very, very soft palette. The complementary color to Lapis Lazuli will be the yellow orange. And in fact, you do get nice muted color here. However, you do get the blue granulation coming through as well. So let's take a look at how this lapis lazuli compares with other colors that are commercially available. Because ultramarine blue is a synthetic replacement to the lapis lazuli, I've pulled up all the ultramarine blues that I have. However, with the Holbein, I didn't even bother with the ultramarine deep. I just used the ultramarine light here because I knew there would be no comparison anyway. So I have here Daniel Smith Ultramarine Blue, Daniel Smith French Ultramarine, Daniel Smith Cerulean Blue, Daniel Smith Cerulean Blue Chromium, Daniel Smith Lunar Blue. Then we go into the Holbein's Ultramarine Light, Cerulean Blue, Manganese Blue Nova, Vertida Blue and Cobalt Blue. Then we have Senelia Ultramarine Blue Light, Senelia Ultramarine Blue Deep, Senelia Cerulean Blue, Cerulean Blue Red Shade, and Roya Blue. And as you can see, in terms of tinting strength, the Lapis Lazuli is far closer to the Cerulean Blue here, here, and here then ultramarine blues. Ultramarine blues have a lot higher tinting strength and a higher quality lapis lazuli would match the intensity of the ultramarine blues. I put Dynasmith Iridescent Electric Blue here just to compare the tinting strength because the iridescent colors are mostly micas and therefore have a lot less tinting strength but as you can see the iridescent electric blue has a lot stronger blue than the lapis lazuli. I want you to take a close look at this color. This is Schmincke's lapis lazuli that Shadow from Sadie Saves the Day very kindly gifted me a dot card of. So these are both using lapis lazuli, but you can see that the Schmincke's one is a lot stronger color, a lot closer to what you expect from something that is the natural version of the ultramarine blue. You get really strong granulations here and that characteristic 
ultramarine blue coming through, whereas there's none of that really in the Lapis Lazuli by Daniel Smith. The only downside to the Lapis Lazuli by Schmincke is you can see that there's this graying kind of gummy color coming through in the Lapis Lazuli by Schmincke, whereas there's none of that kind of green gray hue happening in the Daniel Smith version. So Lapis Lazuli Genuine by Daniel Smith. I would say that if you are in love with the idea of painting with Lapis Lazuli and you want a color that's commercially available, that is reasonably affordable, because let's face it, a higher quality Lapis Lazuli will cost an eye-watering amount, and you are looking for a much paler color, then this will be a good option for you. However, if you are thinking that Lapis Lazuli, you see the stone, that's kind of color you're expecting, you know it's a natural version of the ultramarine blue, then you're gonna be disappointed. I think you're gonna be very disappointed. It's an incredibly light color. It's very, very hard to rewear as well. I certainly wouldn't recommend this to anyone unless they are looking for that particular characteristics of this color because it's such an expensive purchase and I wouldn't want anyone to be disappointed after spending that much money on a tube of watercolour. We have ultramarine blue to take care of the stronger colour and I think if you are looking for a genuine lapis lazuli paint that is commercially available then the Schmincke's version you're going to have a lot more fun with than the Daniel Smith version because it is a lot closer to what I certainly would expect from a lapis lazuli colour. One thing I don't want you to think is that all lapis lazuli is this weak because lapis lazuli is a beautiful pigment and you only have to look at works by Vermeer to see just how beautiful lapis lazuli can be. This is just a lot, lot weaker version of that paint and I would say that it's not a very good representation of this pigment. You know I love Daniel Smith. I have created three series that are based on Daniel Smith's colors, but this color disappoints me so much and I just want to let you guys know that this is what you should expect from this color to avoid disappointment. Usually here I'm going to ask whether you're going to get this color or not but I'm not going to do that this time because unless you are looking for a faint expensive color I really can't recommend this color as if I haven't made that clear enough already. So yes this was Lapis Lazuli if the, seeing this video has saved you a bunch of money and saved you from disappointment, then please do give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!